Skywalker. You just blew up the Death Star, saved Yavin 4, became a hero of the Rebel Alliance, and had carnal thoughts about your own sister. What are you going to do now? I'm going to Disneyland! You're listening. <laughs> You're listening to That Gets My Go. Get my go. <laughs> uh, have we started the game? <laughs> okay, so we're going on week three of this? Month three of your <laughs> adventure. Your kids have all grown uh, yeah. and gone to college. We've actually gone back to Disneyland two more times since we started this show. Oh, Disneyland burned down years ago, but we're still talking <laughs> about the last time you were there. But yeah, we wanted to finish up. So here we are. We're back again and we're going to talk some more because it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart and I think to Rish's as well. Well, we'll find out in the next four and a half hours. That's right. Of That Gets My Gun. And action. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy Disneyland itself. They had the fireworks. They had the parade. And we The parade, you have to like get a spot for it because everybody goes to the parade at 530 so at f- like 4.30, people start setting up and getting their place on the side of the parade route so they can be there for that, which I guess it's cool to see the parade. It seems like such a massive waste of your time, time. at Disneyland because there's so many things you could do. But yet we still saved our place. They do these things called fast passes now, mm-hmm. which is you can go to a ride. Only certain rides that tend to have long lines you can do this at. And they'll give you a fast pass. They like scan your ticket and you can get in with this thing. But you have to come back one hour from the time that you got your fast pass. And you can only have one at a time as well. So you can't just go around, get a fast pass for everywhere, and then go around, get in without doing a line. But in a perfect world, you could get a fast pass for a busy ride. And then, and then go on to busy. an unbusy ride, and when you get off that, immediately get on the busy ride right. without having to stand in the line. Exactly. And so that's what we did with the parade thing. We're like, oh, we're going to have to waste time waiting for this parade. We've got to get a spot where we can at least see, which still didn't work out because everybody was sitting down as they waited. And then when the parade started, they all stood up. And it's like, dude, my kid can't see over you, Mr. Six Foot Ten. So we saved our spot. Well, my wife went with all our tickets and got us a fast pass to Space Mountain. So we watched the parade, and then as soon as the parade was over, we went and zip right onto Space Mountain, and that was cool. An interesting thing about these parades at Disneyland is they are not like your local town's Onion Days parade or Strawberry Days or Goulash a rutabaga days parade <laughs> or whatever, you know, it's not like that. They are friggin' impressive. You know, they go all out on these parades. And so it's got to be like living in New York and going down and actually watching the Macy's Day Parade or something. They didn't have gigantic balloons, but, you know, they've got these really neat floats and they've got all the Mickey Mouse and everybody in their costumes on there and Buzz Lightyear, like I mentioned, and the Woody and Jesse, et cetera. And they have... All these people that are dancers and they have routines. And I and I just think, you know, this park is open seven days a week, all year long. There's not a day that they go, well, when do they learn these dances and get these parades all figured out so that they can be like this? I, I suppose probably like three in the morning or something. They're like, okay, everybody, meet here at this time. And uh, we're going to go through the parade route and work on, a, you know, I don't know. They probably have like auditoriums and dance studios underground They've got all sorts of stuff underground so it's, yeah it's crazy crap <laughs> like that to get all that stuff ready but yeah it was really cool i mean the parade was impressive we got to see a lot of the characters that we wouldn't have seen otherwise we got to see all those princesses that we didn't want to stand in line for do you see that big jugged mary poppins <laughs> i did not sorry uh there was no big jugged mary poppins unfortunately for me but there were very large jugged mannequins on Hollywood Boulevard. So, you know. So I, you still win. I saw jugs in the end. I even saw honey jugs at the uh, Winnie the Pooh thing. So there's that too. And sugar tits. Oh, wait. Sorry. That wasn't at the Winnie the Pooh thing. That was uh, at something else. <laughs> so there's that. And they had the fireworks. And then, you know, it's time to go home. And by the time it happened, I was ready. Walking around and standing in lines for... 12 hours or however long it was man huh then all the kids were and everybody was freaking tired and they're falling asleep and of course you still have to go out and you know find your wait. car yeah you have to wait car. for the tram to take you oh, to the right. parking lot so then that you can find your car and luckily we weren't in the garage because i'm sure we would have been completely lost trying to go to the garage 
and find a spot. It, we were early enough in line that in, in the morning that we were actually in the regular parking lot. Cool. So we found that okay, and then we went home, and I, I swear I was so wasted that night. I, I sat down, I had Renee Chambliss's book on my iPod to listen to, and I laid down on the bed at the hotel and turned that on, and I fell right asleep. I'm sure and, she's very flat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she was. And what's worse is, and in the morning, I don't know if I rolled over onto my iPod or what, but my iPod had got some kind of error in it. Usually you can, you know, reset it. You hold like the enter and the play button or something like that down at the same time. And it reset it and I tried that and it wouldn't do it. It kept saying, you hook this iPod back up to iTunes to reset. And I was like, crap, iTunes, dad, that's at home. And so, yeah, I didn't get to listen to the rest of the book while I was driving like I had planned. So yeah, we drove the whole rest of the way home. In silence. Yeah, I was uh, I was searching the uh, dial for anything that I could find. I think on Saturday afternoon, I, I found a football game of like the Nevada Reno football team or something like that, which is like, who gives a crap? I sure as heck don't. But as we got to find something and we're driving it. Would it be fair to say that you were in the middle of the Nevada desert? Yes. I, as a matter of fact, I'm listening to the – and I, I managed to get like two-thirds of the game in. And it was even kind of a close game. So I, it's like listening to the first two-thirds of a story and then just quitting. Because, yeah, I lost the signal <laughs> before I could even find out how the game ended. And at that point, when I lost that signal, there was nothing. I would – hit seek on the thing and it would just turn over and go all the way through and turn over and i just thought should i just let it roll and roll and then maybe at some point it'll suddenly kick in and i'll have something to make it all those matters worse i got my wife started on the hunger games books when we left and she got so into those books which i can totally understand because i'd read the first two and they were great and yeah, she got so into them that I could not pull her out to get a lick of conversation out of her anything. So yeah, I was basically all alone on the drive home. But before we actually left L.A., we went back out and we went to the beach on uh, the, the morning after going to Disneyland. We went out to Redondo Beach and uh, spent the morning there. And that was cool. I mean, it was... Cool, literally. Yeah. It was December, so it's colder than L.A. beaches normally are. The water at a beach in Southern California tends to not be freezing cold. It's not something that hurts your feet when you step into it. But in December, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a while to get used to, and that water would lap up onto my feet, and I'd be like, ah! And it aches all the way down, like, into your bones, and, you know, you got to stand in it for a while before it finally stops hurting like that. And I managed to uh, get to that point. And we, we played a little bit in the water. And the kids had fun. For some reason, we always go to beaches when it's cold. We went to the beach a lot in San Francisco, which is always cold. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the middle of summer. San Francisco's cold. It's got fog. It's you got to bring a jacket, even though it's 100 degrees, like 20 miles to the east. But, yeah, San Francisco's just cold somehow. Here we are again at the beach in December since we didn't go in the summer like we originally so planned. your kids didn't enjoy it? No, they did. They totally did. They ran around in there, you know. I don't know what it is about kids, but it, it, they, they run can, around. They do run around, but they can handle cold for some reason. If they want, if it's fun, you know, they'll just, my kids, I mean, it wasn't that cold, the air, it was more the water that was really cold. If you got really wet, then it might have gotten cold. But we were going to have lunch there, and uh, we had brought uh, all our stuff along with us. And we were going to have ourselves a little picnic lunch. And, you know, we had our stuff left on the beach, and we went down to play in the water and make sandcastles and crap. And all of a sudden, I heard a seagull going, chirp, 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 doing that thing, going, mine, 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 in the background. <laughs> and I look behind me, and all our stuff is just surrounded by seagulls and pigeons. And I run up there, and a, a seagull has found our we brought just a Daughter. bunch of little sandwich rolls and it has pecked its way into our bag of bread so these sandwiches that we're gonna have are full of uh, you know, who knows what kind of filth comes off of the beak of a friggin seagull but it's a lot of nasty stuff i'm sure and there was no way in hell we were gonna eat a the roll that it had actually pecked into and b any of the other ones in the bag with it i mean we know that it didn't actually touch them but what kind of bacteria and disease is probably in there so it's funny because <laughs> 
the first time you told this story, it was a couple of homeless people. <laughs> and this time it's become <laughs> now, now it's seagulls. seagulls. Yeah, I needed to tame it down a little bit. So, yeah, we got to eat at McDonald's oh. that afternoon. It was so, you don't like McDonald's, but I do. It's yeah, all right, but it's not the top oh, wait, of the Wait, you do pyramid. like McDonald's because we go there sometimes. It's all right, but it's not the top of the pyramid, that's for sure. And I think the lunch that we brought with us would have been better. Oh, well. And yeah, so we started heading east again. Going back, we were going to stay in Vegas, actually in Henderson that I mentioned before, which is outside of Vegas. And yeah, we were heading in that direction to some gigantic casino hotel they have there that has like a friggin' uh, mob connection. What are those theaters called? It has like a big regal theater in it. It has a bowling alley and it has Denny's and it has et cetera, et cetera, all in within this building. We were no reading. toilets, but it has these other... Pay toilets in your room. You have to put in a quarter to be able to flush, but you can actually crap in it. <laughs> Ew. So we start heading and holy crap. Is there a lot of effing traffic in L.A.? Really? This is news it, to... I, I did not know that. It, did you know that, Ed? It turns out, yeah, it, it, it's not a widely known thing, but I've been in traffic jams before in my life, but usually there's a reason behind them. You get in a traffic jam and you finally get to the end of it and you see a bunch of debris from cars that had been in the accident that had been cleaned up and that was why you were stuck there. You see a severed leg you see, and you're yeah, like, oh, you, you I see, the, see now why that happened. You see the blood spatter pattern and you can tell where the beating occurred. Ah, here's what Lorena Bobbitt threw right there. It's not that way in L.A. at all. There's There's no reason. No rhyme or reason behind it. The reason is that there's too many damn people there. And there's no way to make it possible for them to all go. Especially one person per car, you know. Even though we were in the carpool lane the entire way. Didn't matter. There was actually several times where the carpool lane was stopped. As all the other cars kept driving past us in the other lanes. And then, of course, there's the motorcyclists. They go roaring Mm. past you in that inch of space between you and the next lane. I guess that's just what you have to do. If you want to get around in L.A., you got to have a motorcycle and just drive on the friggin' dotted lines. But, man, it was so frustrating. That's all there is in L.A. is freeways. It's like this freeway to that freeway to that freeway. And we were following, you know, Google Maps directions that we'd gotten for ourselves. And so we're this freeway and then you're going for a little bit. And then, oh, you're you're finally speeding up. You're going. And then you get on to the next freeway. Stop. Second you get on, you're stopped. Then you go for a little bit. You speed up and then you get to the next one and it's stopped. We were trying to get out of L.A. for like three hours. We're still in the traffic. And it's just like, this is unbelievable. And you're like, look at all the pretty Christmas lights, kids. Look, they got the whole city done up in lights for us. See, there's red ones on this side. And on the other side of the street, it's all white lights. Isn't that pretty? It was unbelievably frustrating. We expected to get to Henderson with enough time to maybe do something. And we did not. We got there with enough time to get in bed. And on top of that, I totally fell asleep on where the gas gauge was at. And so we're in between Barstow and Baker, and I realize we're almost empty, and there's nothing there. Baker gets you because they jack up the price, <sighs> 60 cents a gallon. Or it's, it was worse than that. See, we didn't even make it. We we're still 10, 6 or 8, I don't know how many miles outside of Baker, and we're like, uh, uh, praying to every deity that we can think of, please don't let us break down here. Don't let us run out of gas. And we see an exit that has a, a gas station. We pull off, and I swear it was like $4.11 a mm. gallon. Because they can. Like that. And yeah, that's, they can. And I was just like, oh. You should have prayed to Thor, man. Because <laughs> hey. I'm sitting there filling up, and the little screen that they have on the gas pump is like, come inside and get a fresh drink. I was like, F you. You know, I might have considered that, but you already charged 10 drinks out of me at least. And then I, you know, went into pee, and the drinks are double price too. It's like 12 ounce can for only $2.50. Yes. And the next morning we went to the Hoover Dam before we headed out. Is this something your kids wanted to see or something you dragged them to? It's more something I dragged them to, although, you know, they weren't averse to seeing it. They Most of them had no clue what the deal is with this thing. But, dude, 
It's okay. It's it's really high up. I mean, it's in a very deep canyon, and they've just like jammed this thing in there. It's very very tall, and now they have this new bridge that they built, and I think all the car traffic mostly goes over this bridge instead of over the dam itself to get across there. And there's a walkway that you walk alongside. This bridge is probably maybe 200 feet higher up than the dam and i think the dam is like a thousand feet taller i don't maybe that's completely out of control and that's taller than the empire state building i don't know but it's a very long way up you fall off the dam and you're falling you know it's like bill and ted when they fall in bogus journey and they're like whoa we're still falling man it's a long ways down before you start to skip your way off the dam. And, and then you get on this bridge, which is that much higher. And, you know, I talked about, at least I think I did, <laughs> being on the teacup ride and spinning around and around and getting sick to my stomach from that. And just one look off of this bridge down at the bottom of this canyon my stomach just turned over, tied itself in knots, and I was sick to my stomach for like the next 45 minutes. I've seen the movie Vertigo, but I don't think I'd ever experienced actual vertigo before in my life. I guess I just don't go up to high place. I had no idea that I was afraid of heights in this kind of way. I don't think I could do that whole bungee jumping thing. Freaking insane. Just looking over the edge made me want to throw up. And then the weird thing about that, too, is that there's a famous story in my family of how we went to the Hoover Dam when I was four years old. At the Hoover Dam, you can walk across, and there's 